Welcome to Main Street Living. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod invites you to join us in worshiping our Lord. Rev. Tyler Poppin brings us today's message, Surrounded by the Saints. Rev. Poppin will lead us in worship after our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us take a moment to confess our sins. If we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. So upon this, your confession, 
in the mercy of Almighty God. Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for His sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus, He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So our first lesson appointed for this All Saints Sunday is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, beginning at verse 9. After this I looked, and behold a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second lesson, uh, appointed for this All Saints Sunday, is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Holy Gospel lesson appointed for our All Saints Sunday celebration is from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. 
Blessed are those who, persecu- who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now take a moment to confess our Christian faith in one voice as we profess the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Our sermon today is uh, from our epistle lesson from the letters, letter to the Hebrews. So let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, dear friends in Christ, All Saints Day, which is November 1st, or All Saints Sunday, is one of my favorite church celebrations. In fact, not too far behind Easter and Christmas. This is because All Saints Day is truly a celebration of the church. It is the day where the church militant, which would be all of us who still are living in the thick Uh, of living out our lives as both saint and sinner, where we, the church militant, remember and give thanks to God for the church triumphant, which is all of those who have finished their good fight in faith and now rest from their labors in the presence of Christ, those whom we can truly call saints. And All Saints Day ties both of these churches together to remind us that both of those groups, Church Militant and Church Triumphant, they are still the church together. They both are in the same family of God together. They are all children of our Heavenly Father with one another But with this reminder also comes a bit of sadness this day because it is also a reminder that the church militant and the church triumphant are separated from one another, at least as this material world is concerned. So we can feel this pain especially as the church reenacts her custom every year of publicly speaking the names of all her members who have fallen asleep in Jesus during this past year. And a bell tolls after each name. This indeed may be a painful reminder to you sitting out there who do not have your loved ones sitting next to you right now. But today must endure hearing their names spoken. So as we celebrate All Saints Day today, whether it be cheerfully remembering the stalwarts of our faith, those heroes of Christianity like St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Martin Luther, St. C.F.W. Walther, or whatever saint was a pillar of your congregation, or whether we are celebrating it uh, in mourning that saint who is no longer sitting next to you, but has been called home to Christ. We remember these words today from the writer of Hebrews, chapter 12, again, verses 1 through 3, who says today, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Dear friends in Christ, this is what All Saints Day is about. Remembering that the saints are not far from us, but in fact surround each and every one of us. And this is highlighted in no better place than when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Because before we approach that altar, the liturgy brings us to a prayer called the proper preface, where we give thanks to God for his work of salvation, and we pray in that prayer, that our prayers, our praise, and our hearts and voices would indeed be joined to those of 
the angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, it's including the saints. And so each Sunday, we join in the great hymn of praise with those who have gone before us. We are united with them in our praise and glory of the Lord Jesus, whose blood has washed all of our robes to make them white. And so as our voices join together with the saints, we are reminded that they have not left us, but are celebrating there the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom. So this is why some churches even have built their communion rails in a half circle. Because we commune on this side, the saints unseen, on the other side, on that side of heaven. But nonetheless, it is the same circle. But the writer to the Hebrews does not stop at a simple reminder that the saints surround us. He goes on to tell us that the knowledge of the saints surrounding us is in fact to aid us in putting off all weights and sins which cling so closely. The writer to the Hebrews is speaking our reality that we who are alive, we still sin in all of our thoughts and words and deeds. We are yet not fully saint, but still very much saint and sinner. We are even plagued with those pet sins, those sins that we knowingly commit day after day, the sins we know are wrong, but that cling so closely that we cannot free ourselves from them. But right when we think that there is no hope for those weights and sins that cling to us, the writer of the Hebrews is quick to point us to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. He points us there because Jesus is the only one who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. The Lord Jesus did that for us sinners to forgive our sins and to make us saints. Saints in our eternal lives to come and saints while we are yet sinners now on this side of heaven. In our own Lutheran confessions, those documents of old that detail our faith, give us who are on this side of heaven, give us a wonderful guidance in how we are to celebrate the saints who surround us especially on all this Saint, on this All Saints Sunday. So the apology of the Augsburg Confession tell, tells us in Article 21 that our Lutheran Confession approves giving honor to the saints. And this honor is threefold. The first is thanksgiving. We ought to give thanks to God because he has given examples of his mercy because he has shown that he wants to save humankind, and because he has given teachers and other gifts to the church. Since these are the greatest gifts, they ought to be extolled very highly. And we ought to praise the saints themselves for faithfully using these gifts, just as Christ praises faithful managers. So the second kind of honoring the saints is that they strengthen our faith. So when we see St. Peter forgiven after his denial, we too are encouraged to believe that grace truly superabounds much over sin. And the third honor 
is imitation. First of their faith, then of their other virtues, which people should imitate according to their calling. The saints surround us, dear friends in Christ, and so we give thanks to God for them. We find strengthening of our faith in them, and we strive to imitate them in faith and in their virtues. But above all of that, they surround us to point us to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard our hearts and minds in the one true faith, even until life everlasting. Amen. So now we take a moment to pray the prayer our Lord Jesus has taught us. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We're happy that you joined us for worship today. Reverend Poppin is the pastor of Our Savior Lutheran Church in Aberdeen, South Dakota, and St. John's Lutheran Church in Columbia, South Dakota. Sunday morning worship is held at 815 at St. John's and 1045 at Our Savior with Wednesday evening service at 7 p.m. at Our Savior. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you would like more information on an LCMS church in your town, please contact the district office at 3501 Gateway Boulevard, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57106, or log on to www.lcms.org. If this program has been a blessing to you, please send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. We appreciate your prayers and support of this ministry. Through your continued support, we can spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Main Street Living is a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and is supported by member churches and viewers like you. Created and produced by many people interested in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ.